Hi, everyone. Welcome to the last keynote speech of Python APAC 2022. In this session, we invite Kusha Das as our speaker. Kusha is a public interest in technologist. He is currently helping with privacy and security at SunNet, the first the service from Swedish University Computer Network. He is a contributor and co-developer in many open source projects like CPython, Tor Project, and Fedora Project. He is the co-founder of DigiPlug, the Linux user group of Dukepa, and also a director at the Python Software Foundation. Kusha maintains a blog to share everything interesting about techniques and his daily life. So today, his talk is about his life experience about a wrong failure. So now let's welcome Kusha Das. Thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting me for the talk. Uh, I hope you all can see my screen uh, properly. So I move on. Uh, click, click. And I'll still uh, talk a little bit more about things I work on. I'm currently working as a private interest technologist public interest technologist. You can see, we talk about failures, correct? Like start, bam, in the beginning. A public interest technologist working at uh, SUNET where we provide network and secure uh, privacy-focused infrastructure to the various universities and research organizations around Sweden and around the globe. I'm also part of multiple other open free and open source software projects. Uh, like I'm part of the Tor project code team. Tor is a US nonprofit and also a free software and a community of multiple servers around the world, which helps you to mitigate issues against privacy. Uh, and then another part where I'm heavily involved and maybe that's another reason why I'm here is uh, Python community. I am a co-developer of the Python programming language, uh, that is CPython. I'm also a director of the Python Software Foundation, the board. Now, coming to today's talk, uh, failure. You all may be wondering why I talk about this subject. Uh, and that's mostly because I get to talk about failure Again and again, when I go and talk and like meet with various uh, students, mostly young ones across the globe, like whenever I go and talk to students in any colleges or schools, they all look at not only me or any other speakers is like, wow, these people know everything. These people can do like so many things. They know programming languages. They can do hardware things. Some people can really do magic with computers with other kind of hardware. Or same goes with sports players. But most of us regularly fail at looking at people's lives and understand how everyone fails. Failure is a normal part of everyday life. So my today's talk is about various experiences from my own life and a few quotes from my friends about how failure saved our lives. I'm focus on my stories. And you all already saw how I started my talk. That's the failure, correct? I'm a keynote speaker. I couldn't even introduce myself properly. Uh, and that's actually not only like, due to this talk. It happened before, again and again. Particularly when I was trying to write down the things I want to talk about and create the slides for this talk. I literally felt I should cancel my talk. Uh, I'm not ready to give this keynote. Uh, like I made one slide, two slides, and then like, okay, what to put next? I know I can talk about this topic for hours if I just you know meet all of you in public, in like real life. But doing a talk on my failures, over like internet, that was kind of scary and 
strange at the same time. Uh, um, a part of uh, that scariness or why I'm like, you know, I'm saying that I cannot give this talk is about the condition of the people I'm explaining this. I think I'm having some amount of privilege to share this stage and then talk about my failures to you all. It's not always easy. Many people get strolled about doing mistakes or there are multiple societies like where I came from, like India, where failure is looked upon as really bad and strange thing, even though everyone fails every other day or every day, depending on cases. Now, uh, coming back to the talk again, this particular talk. So PyCon happening online and there was a rehearsal schedule. And I came online again into a Google Meet uh, call and tried to present the slides, whatever I had ready at back then. And then a few of us on the call together tried to make sure that we could full screen the window. Uh, this is a screenshot from a couple of days ago where uh, I'm not a Mac user particularly, and I still try to see if I can full screen my, uh, in this case, Google Chrome, the browser. I failed. I literally tried to search in google.com in this case and still failed. I couldn't do it. And uh, I took the screenshot and I told everyone there is that, hey, I'm going to put this in my talk and talk about how we fail every day. Maybe I'm a programmer, maybe I'm a code developer of C Python, Python programming language, but I still fail to even, you know, full screen uh, browser window. But today, during my talk, the window is now full screen. And that stands to someone else who emailed me with the steps afterwards. Someone else spent time searched how to make it full screen and sent it across. So that's the learning process. I failed, that's okay. We all failed here in this particular case. And then slowly learned. And today I can present to you with my screen full screen. Uh, I said that I'm coming from uh, like my India, that's my country. So I'm coming from a part of India uh, called West Bengal. Uh, my mother tongue is Bengali, and I studied in a small uh, village school. So, in the during the, my school days, I had like you know the final school final exam. This is class ten. Uh, one of the major thing back in our time in our area was like if you do not study private tuition from the same teachers, uh, not everyone, few of them from the same school you will not pass in the final school exam because the teachers had access to a lot of marks. Uh, I got less marks in particular subjects because uh, in the labs, because I was not uh, learning from them in quotes enough. And the marks was less. And like in many societies, even in India, we look at numbers, the marks we get in any exam as the final, one of the final thing, or how good you are, at least when you are a student. So that was a big failure for many looking at me as like, hey, you did not get enough marks in school days. So fast forward a few years, I joined computer science and engineering in a college uh, called Dr. Visser Engineering College in West Bengal, it's a private engineering college. First day of the college, uh, really excited. Uh, it, it was a physics class. And this is the first time I was taking a proper full uh, dictation in English, something else other than the English subject. So I studied in Bengali, all of my uh, things back in school. And then now in college, 2001, this is the first class. And that's somehow I memorized this light. In the free space, light has the maximum velocity. And I took the dictation, came back after the whole day, uh, came back to the hostel, and thought of checking if I'm doing spelling mistakes. I knew that I'm not good with spellings. I'm still not good. Uh, luckily, now we have computers to fix a lot of those spelling mistakes for us. But I thought of asking one of my friends who had studied in English before 
to check, you know, both the copies, like how many spelling mistakes I had. Can you imagine in one page, 20 spelling mistakes? I kept looking at it and at that moment, I almost gave up. I said, I'm not going to take notes that seriously anymore. Instead, I will start copying, making Xerox of the copies, class notes from the friends who studied in English. Uh, it took me a lot of time to figure out it was not that difficult. I could spend more time and become better at taking notes, which I had to do now every day. But at that moment, it was a failure for me. And as I said, it's not like we studied English about, you know, writing and reading, but I never spoke English before. Then in the end of my first semester, I went to a next door college, which is the much larger old college, uh, RE College, uh, Durgapur, which is now known as NIT Durgapur, uh, for a software exhibition. Uh, people speak there speak English as there are people from, like the kids are from all across India. And we have more than 23 languages official in India, official languages. So at the beginning of that software exhibition, I was very really shy, standing in the corner with my desktop. Yeah, I carried my desktop to a different college to give a demo. Uh, the code was written in Targo C. Uh, and I felt really bad at the beginning that I couldn't speak like everyone else English to them. But after a couple of hours, I understood that almost none of those people, that, uh, the other students in that college or whoever is visiting, Almost none of them can speak C the way I was looking at it, Targo C in this case. So they, look, they looked at my project like, wow, magic with the graphics and everything. And that gave me a lot of confidence. It's like, even though I completely failed at speaking normal English, but I managed to speak enough English but with the words and all the technical terms from programming language and how to write code. So that I explained my idea and project. So, and that was the first time I was actually giving or talking in English to a bunch of people outside of my like friend circle properly. So that's, that was big, uh, but that gave me a lot of confidence at the same time. Now, this, is a real X-ray image of my right shoulder. Yes, that's the screw, which you can see there. Now, the story behind this is, again, in the final year of my college life, 2005. We had Java, the programming language, and particularly a thing we all had to learn was J2E, uh, I think Java to Enterprise Edition. So I went to the nearest big city, that is, Kolkata, Calcutta, back then, uh, to buy Java books. Uh, bought, if I remember correctly, three J2E books, which are like these big, fat books. While well, carrying them back at night in a train, I completely forgot about physics and my physical strength, both together. That I tried to carry the books like this in a, like one hand. And in a sudden jerk of the train, the whole weight that came in a complete wrong direction. And those Java books managed to take my right shoulder out, uh, shoulder dislocation. I fainted at that moment. Later, uh, after many years, I actually, in another place, I sneezed and again dislocated. After that, I was operated and the screw was placed in my body to make sure that my shoulder never dislocates again. So, yes. Uh, that's one of the reasons I really do not like writing Java that much. Like, you know, it's a lot of things I have to read, learn, and carry those books to learn. Back then, I never had internet. So that's the start. So then I joined my first job. This is like in 2005, still. Uh, Fraser in a big Indian IT service company. And during the initial first few months, there was a person who was in charge of all the phrases. And uh, like we had multiple different classes about programming, data structures, database, everything. 
And this person kept saying that how he knows everything really good, more than anything else, and tried to tell us how we should write code. And in this particular, like, like just like the meme on the screen, uh, I tried to tell him, like, no, you are wrong in one of the examples uh, which we were taught. And I was not prepared for the outcome. Uh, no, I was not thrown out like in the image, but instead I was put into on bench. Uh, that means every other friend who joined the job got placed into various teams within the organization. But I never had a team. I had to literally sign in to the office and then roam around. Like if a chair was empty, I used to sit there or go to the restaurant, sit there for a long time, and trying to figure out what to do next. I kept asking around uh, for the like one month or so, I was totally clueless. And then I figured that, okay, I'm not going to get any team if I do not push myself. At that moment, I was sure that I understand basics of Linux. Uh, I was using Linux for a long time back then, uh, at least multiple years, long time means. And so I started asking around like, hey, is there any team who is using Linux? Uh, I can do Linux, I can write some code in multiple languages, uh, can I get a chance in your team? And while slowly asking around, I asked someone during lunchtime who later told someone else in their team and that's how I managed to get into the, like, by solving a small problem for them into the research and development team in this company. So that was a big learning and big failure from the failure, that is, do not piece up the people who has really power to make some damage in your life, at least that early in the career, unless you know what are the ways to get out of the problem. So I never stop doing that. I like if I see something wrong, I generally speak up. But now I know that things can go wrong if I speak up. So think ahead, think about the next steps, and then speak up. So that's the change happened from this particular incident. So yeah, this is me back in 2006, you can see from the picture. So, and at the end of 2005, actually, there was a conference happened in Bangalore, India, Boston. And during the conference, one of the thing I really liked was a talk and a workshop about how can you write code for your Nokia Series 60 phones in a programming language called Python. I really liked the demos, I really liked the language. I started learning it because my goal was to write code for my Nokia Series 90 phone. Yes, an upgrade, a better phone than the Series 60. But I couldn't find from the Nokia website that how can I write code for my Series 90 phone? So uh, the page where it was talking about Python for Series 60, everything, there was a way to contact them. So I filled up the uh, form and asked a question about how, what can I do to write code for my Series 90. It took them more than six months uh, to make sure that question goes up to the chain uh, to the, one of the actual developers of Python for Series 60. And they came back to me over email after six months, that is, saying, we are sorry, you cannot write Python code for Series 94. Sad, a failure, correct? But that changed my life forever. I got hooked into the programming language Python. I got hooked into the community Python. So, and that's, you know, that's why I'm here talking to all of you because Python is the binding form in this community, correct? For all of us. So it helped, it helped a lot, even though in many ways that's a failure. Hey, I couldn't write code for my phone. And uh, this is also the picture uh, where I'm sitting inside the, uh, the research and development uh, team. I, I think I was the only person with a Linux desktop there. Uh, you can even see, I think, physical locks in one of the computers on that side. And then I was working on the projects, but uh, as I said, I had to solve a small problem for the team. And that problem was, uh, on a Java-based project. So I got access to the server, production server, 
uh, luckily for within organization itself. So Java and the project was running uh, using Tomcat, I think 5.5, and that was the startup script. And if you ever work with Tomcat and you know, if when you type the startup script, it will like start giving you a lot of output on the screen, to what we want. So you start, you set, set it down. I think set down was .sh was the correct uh, executable to stop the service. Uh, I don't remember 100%, but uh, the startup .sh, I remember. Why? Because as you saw in the previous picture, one fine day after lunch, uh, pretty nice lunch, I was kind of a little bit sleepy looking at the computer and thought of making some changes into the code and then start the service again. Like I took down the service and I'm going to start the service. I typed the file path, as you can see on the screen, pressed enter, nothing. The command prompt just came back. I kept looking like this on the screen. I'm like, that's weird because if the if I did a typo, it should give me at least a typing mistake, like command not found kind of error. Why nothing? There should be some error. And at this moment, I'm still looking at the screen and not understanding at all what can go wrong. Can you imagine? So for like after almost a couple of minutes, I thought of, let me go near to the screen and look what exactly I typed. I had this on the screen, RM to remove a file. I was supposed to remove something else. I typed RM, I completely forgot about it. Just happily typed the startup.sh at that moment, press enter and deleted the Tomcat startup from the production server in this case. Uh, still a fresher crack in the job. Like at that moment, my I could understand my heart rate going up, my I'm feeling kind of empty in my stomach, stomach ache, body sucking, what to do next. Just looked at every side, like every direction, like, okay, nobody's noticed, like they know that I'm working on the project, the service is down. What next? Um, in this particular place where I'm talking, uh, we never had internet access, direct internet access. So I couldn't just download Tomcat again and see. And in the whole like office building, there were literally two computers downstairs where I could go and actually see what's going on um, like, uh, from internet. So I picked up a pad and a pen, ran down stairs, had to wait in a queue, get access to a computer, literally took pen and paper notes of the whole startup.sh, came, like, came back up running, typed that whole script, startup.sh, and I think the only time in my life when I typed such a long script without a single typing mistake, uh, sh mode plus x, make it executable, enter, boom, uh, Tomcat started. The day saved. But that also gave me a big learning lesson at that moment. I later explained this, by the way, to my team, what happened. And everyone was laughing. People were really supportive. But still, it was a big learning moment for me. It's like, on a Linux command line, when, like, even if you are not root, when you don't have, like, you know, superpower, still make sure what exactly you are typing and verify, then press enter. That happened. Then another few months, one of my other friends uh, from my college who was in the same company joined my team there. And I wanted to show him like, how can you scan the network? Like uh, you wanted to know a little bit about network scanning, what's going on in the network, et cetera. So I tried to show him uh, using a tool called Nmap, if you know about it. So this is before lunch this time. I ran the script and, uh, and command with uh, on the subnet and not saying which one. And then we thought that this is enough for today and let's go for lunch. Went for lunch, more than half an hour, came back down. Like again, talking to my manager and other people in the team in the desk. And suddenly noticed a group of sysadmins running around with their laptops. 
in the, on the floor. I asked one of them because I knew them well. It's like, hey, what's going on? And they said, it might be that we are under attack. There are a lot of packets going on the network. Someone is scanning us. For a moment, I thought, oh, yeah. And then, you know, that light bulb moment, oh, shit. Is that me? So I had to go and ask, check my computer first. Yes, I forgot to press Control C to stop the process. So I did that first and then turned around and told the admins that maybe it's me. Uh, this is what I was happening. So at least their panic stopped, my panic started. Uh, I was called upstairs into the main sysadmin, uh, the person in like leading the infrastructure for the whole company. Uh, he was a very nice guy. He explained to me the power they have of monitoring the network and the power of doing mistakes in the network. Uh, and like, it was mostly a learning point at that moment. Uh, no one told me anything in a, with like angry voice or anything, but I learned a lot of things uh, from that incident. Then again, a uh, couple of years ahead, uh, 2007, 2008, I was working in another company with uh, like uh, one of my good friends, and he was also my manager, Kiran Janulagatta, Jace, as we speak. And we were solving some really good technical problems. Uh, one of them was about identification and authenticating to services using uh, biometrics, particularly fingerprint. At that moment for us, it was like really fun, good technical problem to solve, which can help people in some cases. But after many years, I learned from uh, like Jess again that that project was taken as a proof of concept and used to showcase to some thing which is much bigger, have a lot more privacy issues and security issues and causing real havoc in people's life in India. Uh, you can search about it and you can easily find which project I'm talking about. So that's when the comment about with great power comes great responsibility comes into all of us in our life. We are like a lot of us are programmers, a lot of us are technologists, correct? We decide code, we write those code and Many times we totally fail to see how the code we write today is going to affect our lives altogether in future. I never learned it uh, properly, even though like I was an avid follower of many people who were doing a lot of advocacy back then or like even now. Uh, but I failed to see that how one such small project could cause that much of havoc uh, in slowly, gradually things. Then this is a particular blog post which I wrote. Uh, you can actually search about it in my blog and you will find the blog post. Look before you speak. This is about another incident from IRC, the Internet Relay Chat, in the Fedora Devil, pound Fedora Devil, hyphen Devil channel, where the Fedora Linux developers talk to each other. One day I noticed somebody just said, hey, I have a problem. And generally when somebody talks like that, it's the people uh, who are the normal users, not developers. And generally we ask them to go to Pound Fedora channel for help. So I happily told this person, oh, this is the channel for the developers. Go to Pound Fedora for getting help. And then press enter. And then looked at the IRC nickname once again. And like, hey, I know this nickname. Then I looked again and searched and I'm like, yes, that's the nickname of one of the Fedora developers who is the highest, like one of the highest package, like number of package, uh, packages who owns. So it's like I'm telling one of the senior, really nice person of the community to go and talk in the Fedora channel. So I had to like, oh, oops, sorry. That was my reaction at that moment. Uh, and uh, the person also said, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, I should have said, what is the problem actually? So, and then I went back and wrote that blog post about like, look before you speak. So sometimes I still keep doing these mistakes. Then uh, another big change happened in life. I managed to join at Red Hat, uh, the place I like, wanted to work for a long, long time. Uh, not only for the federal project, but as for open source and everything together. Uh, 
And I wrote a blog post, being very happy. Yay, my first day at Red Hat. Like, I'm working here, etc. And then in the evening, I noticed somebody made an anonymous comment on the blog saying, at least learn to write the company name properly. It's a red space hat. By mistake, I wrote red hat. I felt very bad and sad. I fixed it. And from that day onwards, even now, whenever I see anyone writing red hat without space, uh, it's a, I get the urge of fixing that. And I try to make sure that I do not repeat that mistake again. Now, working in Red Hat, there are multiple stories. Again, that can become a complete talk of itself. But I still want to mention a couple of things I did during my Red Hat days. Uh, one of them is related to a name. So there was one colleague, a friend, uh, whom we all call Anna, means, uh, I think, big brother in one of the languages. So, or multiple languages. So I saw him one day early morning. I went into office, sitting in my desk. I saw him browsing a social media site with some photos. So I thought of messaging him on IRC, saying, stop looking at photos. And I did that to Anna. And I see him still browsing photos, no reaction, not looking into IRC. So I'm like, what's wrong? Then I realized that we call him Anna in real life. That's not his name. That's not his nickname on IRC. Again, panic moment. I looked at Anna and understood that's not Anna, that's Anna, someone from UK. So as you can imagine, I went ahead again in a private message, full scale apologizing for the mistake. Uh, she came online much later in her daytime and really laughed at the problem. And she told me that she can only forgive me if I show her the photos or which social media website it was. Uh, it was fun. So as you can see, this is another mistake where I type something without looking much. Then a programming mistake. I I am part of the federal project, part of the like infrastructure team. Back then, I wrote my first ever uh, big code for infrastructure, which was called Dark Server. Uh, part of the project was about extracting data, uh, metadata particularly, from various RPM packages built into a service called Koji, which is the RPM package builder uh, in Fedora. And I thought I will extract each of those RPMs in the slash TMP and then extract the metadata from that. And, like, and then I forgot about it. I thought somehow the temporary files will clean it themselves. But no, when the code went in production, within a couple of hours, so many packages were built that the Koji services stopped reacting, server crashed. Thanks to the infrastructure team, particularly Derek, who helped uh, to recover the services, took out the particular plugin and make sure that everything works. So as you can see, failures everywhere. In between, I also, something is flying here. Uh, in between, I also tried to learn guitar. I thought, oh, I, like so many people can play, I can also play. And I do take photographs. You can see this picture taken at home back then. Uh, but I can tell you, I failed at it miserably. I tried for more than one and a half month. I couldn't even play us anything and just gave up and used the guitar for pictures. And this part of my life, uh, okay, this picture is just there for, it looks nice. But this part of my life, I was trying to get married, uh, like, uh, I used multi multiple uh, online matrimonial sites, but failed there also miserably. Uh, back in 2007, I had one colleague who had to change the job to a bigger Indian IT service company when, like, so that he could get married to someone. Otherwise, like most people, if they don't know about your company or if they don't, if you don't earn a really large some amount of money in those matrimonial sites, you are no one. But I was lucky also from that failure that in 2012, I met a bright young lawyer, Anvesha, my wife. 
And my life changed massively in every direction and all for good. Uh, many people think that I work in various activism, like projects and things, and those things were there building. No, they came gradually, and they came mostly because thanks to her, I learned about not only about technical things like software licenses and like you know like how things work, etc. From her, but also about life. Uh, she is a lawyer who never had to do things on her computer. Like only after marriage, I think I learned that she had two stenographers carrying her laptop for her. From there, she learned computers. She started giving talks in multiple conferences, including PyCon, teaching actual developers about how they should do deal with licenses. She wrote codes, she wrote research papers for software licenses and things. And she also regularly writes in on her blog. At the same time, she gets trolled because of like she is being a woman, a lawyer, trying to help people learning things. So that's a learning for me that how she's like, you know, that's not a failure for her, but there are people, these like the online trolls who think that they can attack her and they can prove that, oh, like being a lawyer means they do not have a place in our technical society. Uh, but I learn from her every day. And many of my friends who also inform the same about like how they learn from her blog post or from her talks. So please feel free to check the website. Uh, moving on, in 2013, I thought of, let me try to give some interviews to Indian IT service companies to see how interviews happens. And a massive failure in that. In one particular interview, I was like, it was a written exam and there were multiple different shapes, geometrical shapes, and I had to name those shapes. And because I studied in Bengali medium, I never knew what their shapes are called in English. I couldn't answer that. And those people were really not happy. Why couldn't you solve this problem? And a failure, of course, but for me, it was like, okay, I don't know how, what are these things called. And if required, I can learn those, but maybe not required for my interview for a Python developer's job. So that happens. It's not like whenever, wherever I thought I will apply and get a job, it never happened like that. I failed in multiple places. Now, coming back to the Python programming language itself. During PyCon US, PyCon US, last four days, there are sprints where the like multiple project people sit down, we code, and I try to work with the C Python itself. And I think continuously for three years, I was the first person to take down the Python CI with one of my commits every other time. And like every time it happened, the things went red, and I tried, oh my God, like I should vanish. Because everyone is looking at like why the CI is down and like, oh, it's Kushal who's committed that. But everyone encouraged me. And not even a single time people again got angry or anything. Everyone encouraged me to learn from the process what are the mistakes, how to fix things. So it's not because like I became a code developer, that means I don't do mistakes even in programming language things. And talking about Languages. Uh, we all know that we love to work on multiple languages, correct? Uh, I'm sure you all work with uh, more languages than Python, or maybe not on Python at all. So I try to learn new languages time to time. And one particular language, OCaml, only the third attempt, I think I managed to understand how a for loop works uh, multiple years ago. Then in the fourth time, I managed to read through the book a little bit more and then couldn't figure out what to do next. Another language example, JavaScript. Yes, I can tell you again that four times I tried to learn JavaScript, I failed again and again. And I completely gave up on that front. I'm like, if I need help, I have friends like uh, Saptab, uh, who's really good at these technologies. And 
go and ask him about like, hey, how to solve this? Or go and ask him Twitter. It's like how to solve something in JavaScript if I need. But otherwise, I can't understand this language at all. Seriously, I'm not joking on that. And then it comes to another two major programming languages, HTML and CSS, required almost every day. I can't deal with it. It's like over the last many years, uh, first uh, Cyan, my friend Cyan, and then later Saptap also like picked up solving that issue for me. Like every time I need to do anything with HTML, CSS, I had to go to them, ask, can you please help me how to do this? Or can you please do it for me so that I can read and I try to understand. I don't understand HTML and CSS. I tried to learn HTML back in 1999. And I think I stayed with that knowledge of HTML. It's difficult for me and CSS particularly. Uh, many people even think that CSS is not a programming language. Uh, they don't know how wrong they are. And I can tell you here on like, I'm zero, like this is getting recorded that no, I cannot write HTML CSS properly. I can get things done somehow, mostly copy pasting after asking someone else. So that's my scenario. Now, before moving into the next slide, I think that would be one another thing where People, particularly from Asia, uh, like the countries not in Europe or in Europe, like US or North America, we all will relate to. We want to attend conferences, but we need a visa to fly. Even if we can manage all the money and other issues, for multiple places, we cannot get the visa on time or we'll just get rejected on the visa. It happened to me. My talks got selected. I couldn't travel. It happened to my friends. Their talks were selected. They couldn't travel because visa on time. No, they were reached. And that's, that's a failure in one way. But at the same time, that's a learning process that this is part of life. This is not something we can change in one day. And this, and if you, if you are applying for, like, you know, submitting a talk to a conference and then the talks get selected, but you can only do the talk if you have to travel physically. It's, and you couldn't do it. It's not your fault. It's not only you. It happens to other people also. So please make sure like, you know, that you keep that part in mind, that this happens to all of us. And while talking like, to my friends about this particular talk where I wanted to show, you know, Multiple failures. I skipped many, by the way. These are only few things which are maybe I thought fun to talk about. There are other failures where I took down services and yeah, created an even bigger mess. But uh, as I said, like while talking to people about these multiple uh, failures and like, uh, the kind of stories I should talk about, uh, my good friend Brett, uh, Brett Cannon, uh, the Python code developer, part of like Python steering committee council. He pointed out this particular uh, comment about how and where he failed, and he, literally no one noticed apparently. So I look up to Brett for many things in life, including programming. And I'm sure all of us here who are who's listening right now or who will listen to this talk in future, we all look up to multiple other people, but we do not see how they also fail in their lives in doing the things they will in which they're really good at every day. So that happens to all of us. When we are young, we really do not get that point that we have to fail and then learn in life. It's like, when I was young, it was very difficult for me time to time. It's like, why do I have to keep failing at this again, again, and again, and then try to, you know, become better at it. Many times I thought there are shortcuts. Uh, a very recent programming example, this is something you will relate to. Uh, these days I love to write a lot of Rust too. And I'm trying to write Rust from 2017, but only in 2021, 2022, I am kind of a bit okay in writing Rust every day. Otherwise I just keep failing again 
If I do not write Rust for a couple of weeks, I could forget everything. That is my situation. So remember that this will keep happening to all of us. Life is all about both the failure and the success together. It's not one single thing at a time. We all can learn from both the failures and the success. We have to fail fast. We have to try again and again. And then only we learn from those failures. And even though in many cases, society or the people we know, they will not be happy about your failures. They will try to pinpoint that to you. That's not on you. That's not a problem in long run. If you look at your failures as a way to learn, to become successful in future, that's where you know, you'll make a change in your life. As I said at the very beginning, I wanted to talk about these failures in my life because I'm in a condition where I can go up on stage and tell you that I fail every day. And you fail and you will also fail in future too. But we all can learn from these failures. I'm repeating the same message again and again. We all can learn from these failures and become better at things. Uh, maybe not like singing for me, but I know that singing and playing guitar, those two things maybe I will never learn easily. Uh, but for the rest of the things, we can really become better at it if we keep practicing. And on this note, uh, another good friend of mine, uh, John, what I've known, Holly, John Holly, uh, actually gave a talk called Failure is Half the Fun of Success. It's on YouTube. You should go and search about this talk from, I think, Scale 14X conference and, uh, where he talked about his failures. So, and like go and if you know anyone like who spend more hours or whom you think is a very successful person in any field, if you go and talk to them, ask them about their failures. Many of them will be happy to share with you the stories, maybe in a private place, not like, if, it, if not in a public place like this. And that will help you to become better at things and like, have fun on doing things. So like, I would say go crazy, but at the same time, I'll say go crazy and like have fun, fail fast. And we'll all will grow and learn together. That's my talk. Uh, like, if you have any questions, I think we can take the questions now. And I also have the top projects uh, URL here. Remember to visit the project and like, download the browser and use it for everyday things. So, okay, thanks for Kushan sharing. And there are many so there are so many stories that you share are so touching and in. Are impressive for me <laughs> because I I also have some similar um, experience as a programmer, yeah, in the past years. And okay, so there are some questions in the Slido, and I think I can pick up some of them. In, in, in a, Should I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I, I can ask first. Sure. Yeah. So the first question is. Can you elaborate a bit more on the code for the feature? How would you see it evolve? Code yeah. of features, uh, sorry, I need to see the screen. Uh, yeah, can, I stop okay. sharing? can you see the slide? No, right, not like it's in another computer. So just can I stop sharing? That's the first question. Oh, no, no, no. So, so please keep sharing yours. Uh, Maybe I, well, for the future. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now I can see. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I okay. First of all, I don't understand the question properly. But in general, these days codes dictate a lot of things in our life. Like uh, we write code and we think that only affects my laptop or my project. But you do not know how somebody else will use the code in future. So like thinking about the future, thinking about ethics. That's much more important. And as Anvesha keep explaining, like, or telling me again and again, like from her experiences, is that we, the engineers, 
do not learn enough about ethics and how that all evolves together, like how our code is affecting people's life. But please keep that in mind uh, about whichever code we are writing today that will affect all of our lives someday. Uh, that would be my answer. Okay, thanks. And the second question is, um, uh, okay, how do you overcome the negative emotions at the moment when you encounter failure? Uh, that's, I think, a much more personal for everyone. As I said, every time any such big thing happens, my heart rate goes up, uh, my like stomach goes completely empty. You can see even today, when I started talking, I just fumbled, correct, even in my introduction. Uh, even though I was having like enough caffeine in my body. So I think with time, with enough failures, we will just be able to accept the failures. I think that's the most important thing. Accept your failures and try to learn from it. Uh, it happened to me before also, where I fumbled at the very beginning of the talk. And it happened to me today. Uh, but it's for me, it's just like, like it happens. I make sure... I try to make sure that it never happens again, but it can happen. And I can tell you, and you could see from the beginning, uh, like I was really anxious for the, about this talk. I don't know why, but because, yeah, I really do not know why I was so anxious. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And the next question is, and I think it's a definition problem. How do you define failures? And some would say, that if you can learn from failures, those failures are no longer failures. Yeah, it, it, it shows I guess example for the definition. Uh, what do you think about it? As I said, I think one of my initial slide had the definition of failure, correct? That's the official definition from the English language. And in many cases, which all of us personally look at them as not a failure at all, but the society or the other people will keep telling us that's a failure. Uh, I can tell you that many people went and told my parents that, hey, your son is still a programmer. He's not a manager. That's a shame. That's a complete failure in the IT industry. How come after so many years he's yet to become a manager? So how are we going to look at it? Is this a failure? That's completely personal choice, correct? So that would be my answer. Okay, because the 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 the, uh, the name for us titles are all, um, anonymous, so we I'm not sure who asked the questions, and um, but we can maybe we can talk in in the and um, gather town later. gather town in, later. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on. And um, so the last question is. Um, could you men mention more about how or when do you start to embrace failures in lives? Is there a tuning point on a, or, or a specific event or people that inspire you? Uh, there was no one single turning point about learning failures. Uh, I think I was bullied back in school days. So very slowly I started noticing things about how people react to things and like hey even if something i'm enjoying just because others don't do it that's uh, that's where i like slowly started noticing those things so it's not like it happened on one day and uh, even as i said like i was a programmer like i was doing open source for such like, long time i was like trying to be part of various activism things uh, related to technology and how they are changing my life but after my marriage it never even happened in one day o only after years of talking and trying to learn from ambisha i learned a lot more about where the code and the law and the society you know comes together and it's always a process. It's not a one day thing or there was never been a place where a switch was turned on or turned off. And I understood that's the best failure. No, I don't. I can tell you honestly that even after today, this talk, I'll be sad for some time that how I fumbled the beginning. 
I can laugh at it at the same time. I'm like, shouldn't have, but it's okay. So it's it's a process. It's not a one day thing, and that's why I'm saying that even today I will be a little bit sad about the fumble. It happens. Okay, thanks. Okay, so the next uh, there are still some questions, and the next question is from your experience. Is there any general measure to prevent such failures as much as possible, maybe in technical and non-technical ways? I think uh, looking a little bit more, like focus a little bit more, help in many cases, particularly related to things like doing things on a computer, command line. Like before you press enter, uh, if you double check what exactly you type, that solves a lot of problems. With emails, one thing I started doing a lot was I do not write to whom I'm writing that email. Uh, even if I'm, when I'm using MUT, I typed it and then I removed the two field just to make sure that by mistake, I'm not sending that email. Uh, and like, though I should say over the last few years on MUT especially, I'm not doing it that much because just before sending the email, it requires extra steps. So I double check at that step. But if but if you're using any kind of GUI in browser, let's say Gmail, I never write to whom I'm writing that email. Uh, like fill up this uh, subject field, fill up the rest of the email. I wait and double check and then only put the final address, double check and send. Because I do a lot of typing mistakes. Uh, that also goes same in real life. I try, try to keep in mind some things. Sometimes I completely forget, so it happens. Okay, thanks. And um, the next question is, um, as growing up, people seem to be afraid of making mistakes or of avoid failure. How, uh, what do you think about this and what can we do to change the mindset? Uh, it's a personal journey for everyone. As I said, being a kid, I also did not like to fail. Uh, but I knew that I'm not going to get 100 marks in maths easily. I'm not going to get, like, you know, become the class topper because that something was not my goal at all, or also I maybe I never studied enough to become that. So that was a failure in society back then, school, then colleges, where everyone wants to become the topper, who's going to get the high salary job. That was the goal. So it, it, it's difficult to accept, but it takes time. And that's where repeat and like, you know, repeat on the same process, learn from the previous mistake and make sure that you do not uh, do it again. Uh, I think that helps. And it will take time. It will never happen in one day. So it's okay if you fail again and you feel bad and sad about it. It, okay, it is okay. But talk to your friends, make sure that there are people who knows about how you're feeling because that really helps. I'm lucky I have this community, all of you as like, you know, friends across the world. Okay, so, and I, I, I also um, a question last asked for the website for Enwisha, and I think it, he provides the link, I think it's yes. It's, it's your, it's in which has the link. So, and I think the question part is, is almost over. And, and do, do you want to share more thing about, um, uh, I, I, oh, okay, I think we can share you, if you want to talk about more about your stories or, or your experience, we can uh, switch to the get it later. Yeah, and so, Thank you again, Kusha. And if people want to talk about with Kusha, we can move to Gita Town in the room of R zero. So okay, thanks, thanks everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. See you there. Bye.